everyone today. As I mentioned, this is our new podcast series, Upskilling for Net Zero. Having worked together before, I am really looking forward to getting your insights as someone who has had a lot of success in building teams in the clean energy space. So just to get started, could you give us an introduction, Joanna? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much for having me. So I'm Joanna Thorpe. I am Head of Talent Acquisition and Development at Synedix, is a renewable energy service provider. To give you a sense of where and who we are, we have a control capacity of about 11 gigawatt. Our technologies range from solar, wind, storage, very early exploration into hydrogen. We are just under 600 people today, split across 10 countries, and we've got over 500 assets across those various markets. Yeah, definitely. From a recruitment point of view, for us anyway, having worked in hydrogen specifically for myself for the last few years, there's always been a lot of competition for the same talent. And from our point of view, that hasn't changed. So as an organization, what strategies are you adopting to deal with the competition for talent at the moment? It is a competitive space. And I think we're really mindful of that. And we would say that we are a people-centric business. We start with people and it will be people who deliver our success. So based on that, it's really important that we attract and then retain mm, the right yeah, people into Equally business. as important, sure. So it starts with that employer brand and it starts with that employee value proposition. And we work quite hard. We're very intentional about ensuring our culture is strong, that we communicate um, who we are, what our values are from the outset. So every time I meet a candidate, I am you know, potentially meeting a future team member yeah, and sure. ensuring that we are aligned in terms of what behaviours we can expect of each other is mm. fundamental. So strong EVP. Um, and it's really nice to hear that other colleagues have come across Synedix. We look after our socials, how we communicate. Everyone's a brand ambassador. Everyone who's working on a deal with counterparties, wh whether they realise or not, everyone is a brand ambassador for the, the company. And I'm really proud of the people who work here, to be honest. So it starts with EVP and then ensuring that we're listening and understanding what's important. Um, a lot of people come to us because they feel really connected to the mission and the purpose, mm -hmm. you know, powering a bright future. And then layering that through, making sure there's the opportunity to grow with the business, um, ensuring that roles are interesting and yes. <laughs> uh, we can work with colleagues internationally and just hiring with retention in mind means that we're thinking about one company, many careers. We okay. say that all the time. We're interested in the skills and experience that people bring because so many of them are transferable. For sure. So yeah. hopefully it will be the right person at the right time for the right vacancy, but also with a mind to how can you grow as the company grows and, and what might be next. So EVP, one company, many careers. And then for us, it's about making sure that you cast the net as wide as you can. So a wide funnel of mm -hmm. talent. We look in underrepresented groups. DEI is very important to us. Um, women into the workplace, going to specialist forums, just trying to be present so that people know that we are an option and make it a welcoming, warm process if people are interested. Yeah, definitely. And you touched on something there, which I was going to come to a bit later on, but it's probably a bit more relevant now. <laughs> Obviously, we've spoken about it quite a bit in the past. And I know you're a huge advocate when it comes to DNI, whether that's speaking at conferences. As a company, it's quite clear as well from working with you guys. The traditional energy sector does have a poor DNI record. I think that is quite common knowledge. How specifically are you looking to change that through whether it's like your hiring practices or, as you say, retaining colleagues at Sonodex? Yeah. I think the global workforce is something like 39% women. Mm. And the last stats I saw from the IEA were 
something like 16% of the solar sector, the renewable sector is women. And then yeah. when you look at women in leadership positions, it drops again. Yeah, it's like around 10 or something, isn't it? Or maybe, yeah. 12, I think. Yeah, we, something. And we need the talent in the industry. And there is a skill shortage, so there is room for people to come. So what are the barriers? What would stop people? And we've thought about this really carefully and we have set ourselves goals. So we have four pillars to our DEI strategy. We look at inclusion. Mm -hmm. So making sure that people can come and contribute. We look at gender because women, it's an ongoing challenge and issue for our sector and others. We look at underrepresented groups making sure it's not just physical characteristics as well that could be neurodiversity yeah, for example that's as a well huge one at the moment as well it really is if someone finds eye contact uncomfortable it doesn't mean they're not a superb candidate and yeah. it's leaning into people's experiences and then the last of those four pillars would be mental health and, and overall well-being and each of our pillars is sponsored by a member of our senior leadership team. We have tremendous support from the board, from our chair, throughout our, our business of people who see it as their part to play. It's yeah. if we can build that diverse culture, make it inclusive so that people stay and can contribute. So we do training, as you'd expect, unconscious bias. We train hiring managers but also ongoing programs around advocacy for talent in your teams, mentoring, coaching. Everyone who joins gets a buddy so that they have someone oh, informal. So nice. that they... <laughs> but you don't have to ask your manager the same question three times. You've yeah. got someone else. <laughs> and it's just about making people feel seen, appreciated and heard. It's, you know, let's give everyone the chance to succeed. Mm -hmm. as early as possible we're quite data driven we do track it we have a goal of how many women we would like to see as new entrants 40 percent is our sort of target nice. there but it's always got to be best person for the role yeah so for sure yeah sometimes we hit it five out of six years we have one year we didn't that's um, really impressive to be honest <laughs> that, that is really good and the team, again, is really behind this and making sure that we are finding new ways to that, that continuous improvement loop, finding new ways to invite diversity in. And then we would argue that it's a, a superpower. And so if we can unleash it, it will deliver business benefits. And, and that's the reason that we should do it. We know that diverse teams outperform non-diverse teams if you let them and yeah. so let's make sure that we do supercharge these differences for business benefit yeah for sure and it, it completely makes sense because especially when you're working in this space where there is a lot of it is new emerging technologies it's still quite like disruptive and still very much based on innovation and the development of new ideas all of that comes from diverse perspectives if you're just going with whether it's a one demographic in your team, but you're not going to get as much diversity in opinions and, you know, that sort of creativity, I guess, that you do need. So, I mean, there is definitely a huge push on it. Like you can see there's so many organisations like Women in Green Hydrogen, for example, who are so focused on that. Obviously, they just partnered with Hydrogen Europe as well to get more women represented, whether that's like in conference talks or whatnot. But um, so there's definitely you know, there's there's definitely a push for it, but it is interesting when you go to the workshops that are based around this topic, and I'm sure you've had it as well on panels where just little things like job descriptions, um, if they're too tailored one way, um, women are just less likely to apply if they don't feel they're like 100% of the job compared to men. Obviously, we're talking gender diversity here, but it is interesting that something that small... I completely agree. We wanted our approach to diversity to be really rooted. We didn't want it to be a campaign. We wanted it to mm -hmm. be, this is how we are. Yeah. So we took it right back to look at policies, processes, ways of working, um, right through to when you first speak to a hiring manager and just 
challenge. Make sure if someone says, oh, that someone needs three years experience, you say, what do they need to have demonstrated yeah, in those sure. three years? And taking it back. And then we, when we write a job description, we deliberately look for desirable skills, not essential mm -hmm. skills. Yeah. We run it through a decoding software just to make sure mm -hmm. that the choice of language isn't going to subconsciously screen anyone out. Mm -hmm. And then when you start your process, we make sure that you'll meet that is as fair and transparent as we can get, that you'll meet a range of people, that you'll be asked to do a psychometric or a case study. So something other than an interview, just to give us a rounded view of the candidate and set people up to show their best selves. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, it's, it's good that that's so embedded within Sonodix at the moment. I think sometimes, obviously, we speak to people all over the world from like different cultures all the time in terms of like potential clients as well. Uh, no one says they don't want diversity. <laughs> um, but <laughs> people say, you know, that, yeah, we, we're looking to increase our diversity and this is what we want from the hire, but then go to explain the role with he should be doing this. <laughs> this, this will be his role. And it's, it's getting into the mindset of just that being what your company is rather than a bit of a tick box, which I think maybe sometimes that how it is how it can come across, even if it's not intentional, but obviously things like that will put someone off if you're in an interview. It's that unconscious bias. Yeah, that exactly. We don't know when we're doing it. Mm. And we all have heuristics and biases it's how we navigate the world ensuring that there's no single point of failure that we've checked everything and there is the second viewpoints um it's not perfect of course yeah. but we always keep trying to improve mm -hmm. and look for new practices that we're seeing in in other industries let's see if there's any ideas that we can transfer i'm really keen that we make our candidate experience almost like a customer experience yeah it should be a continuum between being that candidate to being that new joiner to being that team member and it because sometimes we meet the right person just not for that job or yeah. that time so it's a small industry yeah for sure you know it definitely is but yeah based on I think you mentioned it before as well um was your very international business you've got offices all over from memory I think you do like quite flexible working I don't know if that's something which has come from the pandemic obviously during the pandemic and after naturally a lot did change with businesses operationally because it had to, to keep things moving right but the employer employee relationships change significantly obviously where you do have I'm not sure whether it's remote or hybrid teams how do you ensure they're high performing with that as well as maintaining company culture flexibility really matters to our people and we've tried to listen to that and respond so we have hybrid working in place we ask people to come to the office or their place of work which could be a site a couple of days a week mm -hmm. at least we have some people who prefer to be here five days a week and that's great too and it's getting that right balance of keeping our culture strong and, as importantly, helping people collaborate. Yeah. At some edits, we're really lucky. One of our values is one team because we know that any project will take all of us, people from across business, different functional areas to deliver. So it was a little bit in our DNA. We were used to working collaboratively in remote virtual settings mm -hmm. before the pandemic okay but that moment that the pandemic hit it did push us all out and yeah, we did a continuous round of checking in with our people understanding well-being be that physical emotional how they felt they were working connection with others and we put in place a host of different initiatives I mean, we did online pizza making we had a, a gym <laughs> three sessions a day with an instructor so that you could actually exercise with your colleagues. So you're if very you wanted Joe to. Wicks. <laughs> yeah. Some people got really quite fit after a few months. It's intimidating. Yeah, I think people but, went either way. I went the other. <laughs> <way. laughs> 
Um, so lots of flexibility, but then we looked at what does the team really want? And we know that we have 44 nationalities in oh, wow. the team of just under 600 people. It's really diverse. That means that people have got family and loved ones in different locations. Yeah. So we introduced the work from elsewhere policy as well. So for six weeks a year, if you want to go and work in another country, as long as it's safe to do so and you have a safe environment, yeah. you can do that. Some colleagues will go and work for the summer months with their family and then like, keeping mm. that connection strong because you know, happy, healthy people tend to be engaged and, and productive. So we have work from elsewhere, an unpaid leave, we do summer working hours, just trying to help people with that work-life balance yeah, as sure. well. But keeping that collaboration and connection piece is right. So it's thinking about the tasks as well. When people are in the office, you can see them in meetings, working with each other, brainstorming. You know, it's rare that you'll see someone just sort of locked into an Excel or their laptop. Yeah. But it's, it's always been with us, this sort of virtual working. Um, That's good. So it think- didn't hit so hard then. <laughs> As it maybe did some, um, yeah, as hard as it could have, yeah, yeah. That that's good. I guess it's good if you've already got that like virtual infrastructure in place and people are used to it as well. Um, we try and remind people regularly because then we've got the another sort of dimension is newer colleagues and longer serving colleagues. Yeah. So it's really important that we don't assume that people at different stages will know the same information mm-hmm. so we do these workshops and just refresh each other on our part to play so that expect expectation of living the values and those behaviors together so we'll do that sort of every year make it fun and yeah lots of social events so yeah that's good end of year celebrations summer parties mm. have you got a summer party coming up this year we have. We are next Thursday, actually. It clashes oh, very with the soon. Oh. That we're doing treasure hunts and then ending up with a barbecue. Very nice. Somewhere east by the river. Oh, very nice. I'll be on a flight during the general election, so <laughs> not quite sure. haven't quite worked out how I'm going to do that one yet. It might be a proxy vote from my mum. <laughs> But um, we'll see what happens. But um, yeah, we've got ours in a few weeks and completely forgot. I can't believe how quick it's come around. Uh, we're already in the summer months. Um, it's nearly July, that is scary. Yeah, it's terrifying. <laughs> we won't get into that, I'll get stressed. But <laughs> but yeah, you were talking, I think, right at the start of the call as well about you have, you cast the net quite wide when it comes to hiring. With Where there is still, as I said, like a high demand for talent naturally companies like yourselves are open to looking at transferable skill sets because as you mentioned just then as well there's someone who can do this job in another industry who would love to work in this industry and it is a very attractive space to work in so what are the valuable skill sets that would make a transition to a company like yours like a renewable energy business success and how could people better promote this when they're applying or interviewing for a role? So it will vary by type of role that the person's applying for. Um, But absolutely, I think skills and experience is more important, I think, these days than finding a direct match Mm -hmm. and trying to create that space and the person's got to fit directly into it so there are skills that everyone needs to succeed be that communication collaboration time management project management what we what's considered soft skills but I would term essential skills so having those anyway leadership and management they are always good to evidence and highly transferable Mm-hmm. Um, and just from speaking to candidates who are looking to join Synedics, it, it's a really important driver to people, the, the calibre of their colleagues, what they might learn from each other and how they're managed. So making sure that strong managers in the business yeah, for sure. uh, who care about their talent want to develop people. But for me, that's really important. 
So you've got those sort of essential soft skills and then layers on top of that, like analytics, data management, AI. Mm, big it's one at the moment. Yeah, ask anyone whether they use some form of generative AI that week and nearly everyone will put yeah. their hands up and <laughs> they should. But that's so transferable because mm. actually that's showing a curiosity and ability to learn. And it's that growth mindset, that resilience, that ability to learn will help people succeed in different companies. So I would suggest reading the skills on a so for a synetics vacancy read the desirable skills think laterally think about the evidence that you can provide don't exaggerate just yeah. think about what's trans transferable and share that and um, we have people who have come to us from all sorts of different industries it's much quicker to learn about the renewable sector than it is to try and train someone in a particular aptitude mm -hmm. or a way of approaching um, a project or working with colleagues. Yeah, for sure, definitely. Thank you so much. You've given me so much insight here and I'm sure it'll be really useful for others who are in the same position as you. Obviously, I know you said you guys look to other industries to get some ideas on how you can do things better. And I think this will be really valuable for others as well. Is there anything that you wanted to add that we've missed? Anything exciting upcoming? Clara, it's always a pleasure to speak to you. So thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. I'm absolutely passionate about seeing the energy transition happen as quickly as possible. There's so much change and volatility and ambiguity in our sector. It's a really exciting time to be here. Lots going on. Always lots going on. Yeah. Time flies. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm just delighted to see. We were reflecting earlier today that when I joined six years ago, Synedix was gunning for one gigawatt controlled um, operational capacity. And it had taken nine years to get to the one gigawatt mark. This year we'll build just in one year, we'll build over one gigawatt. So wow. that exponential growth will just keep going, which you know, shows the scale. Mm. And so I would just invite anyone to think about renewables as a sector, um, whether it's something that you're passionate about, uh, you've got a varied skill set. There's a lot of growth in this sector and it's a great sector to be in. And obviously, Synetics is a great company. <laughs> Little bit of promotion there. <laughs> yeah, great. All right, then. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. It was so great to have you on. Um, and yeah, I look, I look forward to speaking to you soon. Lovely. I'll thank speak to you, you soon.